Hi everyone, today we are going to create some easy ornaments designed in Procreate. You can either create some really simple illustrations and lettering like I did here, or you could create some custom ornaments like this one where someone's name or picture goes on the ornament. We're going to go through the whole process of getting an idea for an ornament to creating it in Procreate, so you will be ready to sell your ornament by the end of this video. Of course, if you don't like drawing in Procreate, you can use any app you'd like and even if you want to work on paper you can follow along with me in this tutorial. I'm Liz Kohler Brown. I'm a surface designer and hand letterer who loves helping artists and designers make artwork on their iPad that is sellable and professional. So let's start out here on my numerals Pinterest board because I want to share this with you so that if you want to grab some number shapes you can do that here and then you'll have some ideas for numbers to put on your ornaments so I'd recommend just scrolling through this there's a link in the description finding one that speaks to your style and then just screenshot it and you can use that photos app to crop it so that you can just see the numbers you want to see like that's really all I need so go ahead and do that. Maybe get a few different numbers you like so you can play around with various number shapes. Then I'm gonna go ahead and head over to Procreate where I already have my document ready. And this is 3000 by 3000 pixels with a print template popped in there. So I literally just went to the page of my printer and took a screenshot of their print template. So whatever printer you decide to use for your ornaments, you're just gonna wanna make sure you're working at the size they want or larger and keeping in mind the bleed. So these particular ornaments, obviously we need to keep in mind that hole, we need to keep in mind this border. So that's why I just draw directly into my template. In my ornaments class, I have reviews of so many different ornaments and printers different materials like wood and metal and glass and ceramic. So you can check that out if you want to get a lot of information about different printers that you can use, but of course you can just choose one that you'd like. You can start watching my ornaments class right now for free using a trial to my membership, the studio. So if you want to do that, just get a link for the trial right below this video. So I'm going to start drawing on a new layer, not my template layer, because I want to be able to reuse this template over and over. And I'm gonna start by just jotting down some ideas. So I do know that I want to have the year and you don't have to have a year, you can just do an illustration. But I do find that things that are dated are easier to sell because they have that built-in urgency like I need to buy it now because I'm not gonna be able to buy an ornament of this year next year. So it's kind of like commemorating the year which makes it fun for me as the illustrator and fun for the person buying it, like, you know, remembering this year's holidays. So then I wanna have some kind of illustration to go with it. So on a new layer, I'm just gonna start jotting down some ideas. So one idea might be some cute little mittens, you know, those like vintage style mittens and I'm keeping this really rough you guys this does not have to be super fancy let's duplicate that mitten and maybe throw it over here just kind of tossing it so we have this fun little bit of movement and then what if it was like uh, those strings that connect them and it went all the way around like this. So we could play around with various ways of getting that string to go around. So this is kind of one idea. It's ornament with some mittens. So I like to do that same sort of thing with a few different composition ideas. So here is another one maybe some stockings that are sitting on a ledge. So I recommend what you do here and what I'm going to do here is to take a few minutes to create some templates like this. You're just figuring out what are some fun little compositions that I might consider putting on an ornament. Like what are, what are people most going to want to commemorate about the year? Or what kind of imagery is going to be most sellable? 
you know, it kind of depends on what your intention for this is. You could be doing an ornament just for your family, or you could be doing one for your town that's like um, your town Christmas. And, you know, you could be the one local artist selling ornaments with your town or city name on it. So go in whatever direction you want with this, of course, and just take a few minutes to play around with various ideas. And then we'll meet back up when we have some thumbnails that we're happy with. So I want to show you all the various thumbnails I have and what I landed on as a final idea. So we have a snow globe. I do think that's a good idea, but we're missing some ideas for what goes over here. This is probably one of my favorites. It has just really fills the page nicely and it's just a really simple 2024. It's non-holiday specific. We could do a fun little mug with marshmallows and some evergreen and cinnamon stick. I like that one too. This one I feel like is missing something. I like the mittens, but I'm not sure what else to fill it with. Maybe some plants or something, but you know, when you're working at this scale, you have to be careful to have too many little spindly tiny elements. This is definitely a solid one too. I think probably four would be a better number for most families three, you know, that's where you get into trouble. It's like if you put four, then people with three people in their family don't want it. So it's a little tricky when you get into numbers of stockings. So I think I'm going to play it super safe, you guys, and do a wreath and numbers. And the wreath is going to be symmetrical. So I merged all my sketches onto one layer and just reduced the opacity of that sketch layer. And now I can start sketching in my numbers. So I don't do super fancy technical lettering, you guys. I'm not a font designer. I'm not a professional hand letterer. Um, I like doing the rough old style that you see in like vintage magazines and things like that. So that is the style I'm going for. And I'm using that screenshotted style as an example but I'm not copying it exactly obviously we never want to just copy someone so just play around with this a little bit sketching in these shapes and I recommend that you do the same and we'll meet back up when we have our letters all sketched So I think you can see as I go through this process that I really just do varying levels of roughness. So the very first one is super rough. I'm just breaking down the general shapes. And then we get into slightly more complex versions. And as you can see as well, I'm not following my reference image perfectly. I felt like it was just a little bit too curvy for the scale of ornament. I want people to be able to read my number really easily. So just playing around with how I can adjust the existing number to use this sort of fun curviness without making it unreadable for my viewer. So I'm trying to find that balance. And once I am happy with this too, then I'll just duplicate it and we'll use it for both of the twos in 2024. So 
So here are my final numbers and I'm going to make that a little bit bigger on the page just so it's really the most prominent thing. I'm doing that first before I do any of my wreath because I really like to know for sure that the number is getting the most important spot and is really prominent. So let's get rid of that number. I'm going to turn on canvas, drawing guide, edit drawing guide, symmetry and vertical so that means we can draw in symmetry and i'm just going to start out with making some pretty marks i just want to have a really nice flow so that's my most important concern right now is just getting a nice flow to this whole composition so it starts with the shape of this vine and I like to think about the shapes in my composition. So we're using a lot of rounded shapes in the numbers. So I'm using a nice, smooth, rounded vine as well. So it kind of echoes that shape that's in the numbers. So let's start filling up this vine. These are just gonna be some fun winter plants. So I'm not too worried about what the leaf shape's gonna be. I'll figure that out. When I get there, I just want to make sure that the directional marks, the lines of this wreath make sense and are fluid and just filling the page in a way that accentuates the numbers but doesn't completely take away from it. So I'm trying also to not be too redundant, like one, two, those look really similar. So let's erase this one and see if we can be a little more interesting with this one maybe coming in. So I'm looking for areas where I sort of did the same thing twice. Here's another one, one, two. We don't see that in nature. In nature we see chaos, beautiful chaos. So I'm trying to mimic that here. And one way you can do that is by bringing vines backwards. So there's so many different directions we can go in. We can go backwards, we can go forwards, left, right, up, down. So we're just trying to vary all of that. And there we go, we have a skeleton for our composition. So now I can go through and just turn these babies into some pretty leaves now that I know that the overall shape is correct. So I'll take just a minute to finish that up. Another thing I'm being careful of is leaves just barely touching each other. I'm trying to not create any awkward situations where it looks like they're about to touch, but they don't quite touch. We, as the illustrators, have to decide, is it touching or is it not? And make that decision and stick to it. Whereas when things just barely happen in our illustrations, it frustrates the viewer because they don't know exactly what they're looking at. So I'm making sure there's nothing, even the slightest bit awkward, like, you know, two tips touching each other like that. They're like, wait, is that start of a leaf, the end of a leaf, what's going on there? So once I feel like this is pretty much full, I can always adjust these slightly as I ink, but it feels pretty good in general. Although some little spots can get more leaves as we ink, for the most part, I'm happy with that. The only issue we have is that the symmetry isn't working very well in some areas. So I'll just go through and play around with a better way to fill that space. So it might be something like this. And of course, if we need to scooch our numbers over a little bit, we can. So that's why I keep the, the sketching as rough as possible for as long as possible. So I can make little hairline adjustments like this. So I'm going to create a new layer for some berries and turn on drawing assist, 
get red as my color and just go through and pop some berries all around here and I'm kind of mimicking this shape that's on the two so again we're bringing in that consistency the cohesiveness bringing various elements of the composition together so the viewer can look at this and say oh wow this just feels like everything fits together it was just one big happy family here so I'm happy with all this. Our last step here is to ink. And I'm gonna be using the brushes from my Everything Bagel brush set, which you can get right below this video. And the rough inking, I think is the one I'm gonna use. So feel free to use that or something else that you like. And you all know the process at this point. I'm literally just on a new layer. I'm gonna go through and fill up every space letting it be a little bit rough it's okay if it's rough it's it's handmade and you know in the ai age this handmade feel is becoming more and more valuable so embrace it go with it and we'll meet up when we're all finished inking obviously keeping every new color on its own layer so we can play around with color at the end So here we go, everything is inked. I can make my sketches invisible and I do like to save all my sketches. I never know if I'm gonna wanna re-ink this in a different way. So I'm just gonna group those sketches and group all of the inked stuff. So what I've got is berries on one layer, veins, leaves, numbers, and let's just make the template invisible to make this really easy to see. So then you can imagine if you put this at about the size it's going to be, you can see how big those numbers are going to be. Let's do some color versions. So I'm going to select, tap on it, duplicate, open it up, and let's grab some color. So let's start with the leaves. I'll tap select, making sure color fill is on. I kind of want to do some brown leaves and then the veins will make this lighter gold. Just that red and gold is really pretty. Let's do that one more time, changing up the red. What could the red be? You know, you don't have to do conventional Christmas colors. You can certainly do some kind of avant-garde Christmas colors. I like the blue and gold. That's really pretty. I have noticed that with the ceramic, at least the darker colors do better. So next round, I am going to do some darker ones. So that's it. You could share these right on social media. They don't have to be ornament designs. You could just share them and tag me so I can see it. I would love to see your design and your color versions. This is a great thing to share at the end of the year, even if you're not going to get this printed on ornament go ahead and share it or you know just email it to some friends and family so remember if you want to learn my whole process for printing photographing pricing marketing these getting them out in the world so people are buying your ornaments check out my ornaments class you can start watching it free right now using a trial to my membership and check out the whole ornament class for free right now. That's kind of a no brainer, right? So I will see you guys there. It's question time. In case you didn't know, at the end of these tutorials, I always answer a question that someone puts in the comments. So if you want me to answer one of your questions, pop it in the comments below. This question is from my little Frenchie. This person says, thank you for the information, Liz. Which canvas size do you use in Procreate to create your art? artworks for best quality. 
This is such a great question and one that I get all the time because I know a lot of people wonder this when they're starting some new artwork, what size do I work with? And that really depends a lot on where the work will be printed. So let's talk about this example for this ornament we just created. These aren't any bigger than two to three inches, right? So you don't need to go any bigger than two to three inches in this case. However, personally, I like to double it. I always like to double my canvas size. So if someone writes me and wants a project that's at 3000 by 3000, I go ahead and make it in 6000 by 6000 because I just like to know that I have extra wiggle room in case I ever want to reuse that artwork for anything else. So that's my suggestion. Number one, think about where it's going to be in the world. What size are you going to need for that? And just double it to be safe. So remember, you can learn my whole process for creating ornaments from sketching and getting ideas to selling, pricing, even doing custom ornaments in an Etsy shop, your website or locally. So I share that whole process in my ornament illustrations class. If you want to join us, you'll find a link to that in the description. Remember to share your ornaments with us here in the comments. If you post it for sale or if you just want to share your ornament design, you can tag me on Instagram at Liz Kohler Brown so I can see it. I can't wait to see your ornaments and I will see you all next time. Bye.